You might have heard about these different DNA methylation clocks that supposedly measure your biological age. I've made several videos about these things. In my previous video, I showed my results with the my DNA test that told my biological age based on the test was 16 and uh, it hasn't changed within the last three years. Three years ago, it was also 16 and now it is also 16. Now, there is another separate test that looks at the speed of your biological aging, which is based on the do not in pace value. So I have done the true diagnostics do not in pace value test and my speed of aging is 0.62, which is an excellent result. And it basically means that every calendar year, I'm only aging 0.62 of that which uh, so I'm not like like my speed of aging is relatively low I'm uh, aging much slower than the one chronological year and I did check out the Brian Johnson's rejuvenation Olympics leaderboard and uh, this uh, leaderboard where people share their results with their biological age tests then this leaderboard isn't about who is the youngest in terms of who has the lowest biological age because that can be yeah like very subjective it can there's a lot of murkiness about this data there's uh, not a lot of consensus of what is the actual like way to measure that but uh, the this leaderboard the rejuvenation olympics is based on the do not in pace value or the speed of your aging. There's two leaderboards. There's the relative change leaderboard, which is the percentage of improvement from baseline. And Brian Johnson is number one in this uh, ranking because he started off at like the age of 45 and he has reduced his biological age by I think like five or six years now. And uh, the percentage improvement is 14.71. So, I mean, that's, uh, you know, the issue with that is that if you start off with a, like a worse uh, result, then it's obviously very easy to improve upon the baseline. But there's also the absolute leaderboard, which uh, mostly based on the three of the do not in pace test scores across six plus months and uh, the number one here is uh, Gabriela Wong with a point with a score of 0 0.69 and the second place is Elena Perez 0 0.6077 and uh, the rank one based on this is yeah like Gabriela Wong 0 0.69 over the three of the average uh, do not in pace scores over the course of six months and Brian Johnson in here is actually number six uh, 0 0.74 so what it basically means is that you do three of those tests that measure your do not in pace value the speed of your aging and uh, then you average it out based on those three tests what your average score based on the three tests and uh, yeah Gabriel Wang is 0 0.69 Brian Johnson 0 0.74 my result 0.62 is kind of at least, you know, based on this information is the unofficial uh, record number one score, but uh, there might, I'm not able to qualify for this <laughs> leaderboard because I haven't done three tests. So I'm going to have to do two more tests and I have to wait until, you know, September and October to do the third test. So there needs to be th six months a gap between the first and the third test. And uh, yeah, that's why I need to wait until October to do the third test to see, okay, what's the average of my speed of aging over the course of these uh, three tests. Disappointed! And of course, I have done only one test so far. This one test showed that it was 0 0.62. If I were to do two more tests, it might change. It might be like 0 0.65, 64, 67, whatever it is. Uh, the issue is that I recently also had COVID. So I had COVID <laughs> this weekend. And uh, based on the study that we do know is that biological and physiological stress, such as COVID infections, inflammation, increase your biological age. Now, we don't know how long it's going to stay elevated, but it does return to baseline after a while. So I need to wait, you know, at least maybe one or two months before I do the second test, because otherwise the COVID that I just recently had, it wasn't serious COVID. I just had a fever, high fever for three days and a little bit of a sore throat and nothing else. I have no other symptoms. I have no other side effects. I recovered very fast. But if I were to do the same test right now, then my biological age would be much higher and my speed of aging would also be at least based on the test in this particular moment would be much faster and higher because I just had COVID. And this is the issue with these tests is that they never tell you the actual objective truth. <laughs> they always tell you a snapshot in point of time. And that snapshot is dependent of how much stress are you experiencing now, whether or not you had COVID, whether or not you had some other food poisoning or some other infection or inflammation, whatever it is. So these tests are never 
100% objective and 100% accurate. There's a lot of other factors there that will determine the result of the tests. And, you know, yeah, I, I will do the two tests as well to get to the leaderboard. I just need to wait a few months for my body to recover completely from the COVID and to also just qualify for the six month gap between the first and the third test that uh, needs to be there. Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be doing the two tests in the future in order to qualify for the leaderboard and get the three test average result i'm not planning on changing my routine i'm gonna follow the same lifestyle routine i'm not gonna change any of my supplements or anything like that and uh i wouldn't i would expect that my results uh, would stay relatively the same and uh, yeah we'll see what happens but do you want to slow down aging and live longer if yes then i'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock if you're interested then email me the word health to info at cblan.com and i'll send you the details but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered